the Nigerian Senate has expressed concern about increasing rates of child molestation and abuse in the country. To this end, it has mandated security agencies and Ministry of Women Affairs to arrest the ugly situation. The resolution was reached by the Senate at the plenary, which come against the backdrop of the incident of sexual molestation of minors, which is becoming rampant in the recent time. The lawmakers in the red chambers expressed urgent need to check the disturbing situation. This followed the presentation of a motion on the subject by Senator Benjamin Uwag Jumungu from Imo State. The Senate is disturbed that child sexual abuse is beginning to rear up its ugly head in Nigeria. And recently it was reported that in Lagos, a school supervisor was accused of sexually molesting a two-year-old child. The state is aware of the case in Kano reported on the 4th of May 2017 where a man in connivance with his wife raped a six-month-old baby following an advice of a native doctor. The state is aware that a case reported in March 2017 a 55-year-old man in Katsina was accused of raping a seven-month-old child who is also his stepchild. And it is very difficult to discern between those that have some mental stability and those, of course, who have some one form of derangement or the other. Otherwise, there is nothing that can explain the type of sexual abuse that an adult male who want to met out on a, on a baby female and he says he has some mental stability. Certainly not. So I think there's some, some element of mental derangement that is pervading our country. That of course the health authorities must go into very quickly to determine the mental stability of these people. What uh, Senator, my brother Senator Wajimogu has listed here is just a, a few. There are many things that are happening to children in this country. Some of them are even used for rituals, Your Excellency. You will not believe this. And these are what people in Nigeria, people who call themselves human beings, are doing, perpetrating against this innocent, very innocent children who have come into this world, not by their own making. You don't need to bring in a child in this world and punish that child. No, we all must stand against it. So I support what Senator uh, Wadiogu has said. Similarly, the Senate has mandated a committee on women affairs and health to liaise with the Ministry of Women Affairs and that of health to work out ways of curbing maternal, newborn, and infant mortality in Nigeria. This is a resolution reached on the floor of the Red Chamber following a motion presented during the Senate section. The sponsor of the motion, Senator Ahmed Ogimbe, representing Kogi Central, lament that 70% of maternal and infant death in the country are caused by treatable or preventable infectious diseases. The Senate recognizes that under the auspices of Federal Ministry of Health, and the integrated maternal, newborn, and child health strategy has been put together to revitalize primary health care in every local government and considerably extend coverage of key maternal and child health intervention. Further recognizes that under the Federal Ministry of Health, there is the National Strategic Plan of Action on Malnutrition, on Nutrition, excuse me. The Senate is alarmed that these programs have contributed very little to, the, to reduce the maternal, newborn, and infant mortality rate in Nigeria. In his remark, the Deputy Senate President Ike Kirimadu says it is urgent that measures are put in place to check the disturbing trend of infant and maternal death in the country. The situation where our women and our children keep dying, it will come to a day where there will be nobody living in this uh, part of the world. So it is important that uh, we we'll hold this as quickly as possible. Yes, the birth rate seems to be outnumbering the death rate because of the number of children we produce there, the number of wives we have. So I'm sure that with education and civilization, the number of children and number of wives will also reduce. So if the infant mortality and the maternal mortality keep increasing, it means that at some point, our, our population also start decreasing. So the earlier we deal with this situation, the better for each and every one of us. So I want to thank uh, Ogemba and those who have contributed to ensure that uh, we be able to, um, to um, I deal with this issue. Muywa Bamdele reporting.
Nigerian Senate has summoned the Minister of State for Aviation, Adi Sarika, to appear before it to give details briefing on the steps that have been taken to minimize human error and avoid preventable air crashes. This resolution by the Upper Chamber of the National Assembly is coming at the wake of the reported incident in Paracourt involving a Dana airline which overshot the runaway upon landing at the airport. The Senate action was sequel to a motion sponsored by Senator Olubenga Shafa from Lagos and eight other co-sponsors. The lead sponsor of the motion, Senator Shafa, said the near air disaster at the Paracourt Airport and another incident involving the same airline about two weeks earlier where the door of the aircraft fell off upon landing at Nandi Azikwe Airport, Abuja. This is blamed on factors including poor state of the country airport. Some of the human errors identified by AIB as causes of the plane crashes including include non-lightening of runways and airfields, poorly constructed drainage culverts, inaccurate information by the control tower, lack of proper certification of radio operators, and poor supervision of aircraft imported into the country. Contributing to the motion, Senator James Manager, Shukuka Utaze, Mao Oabua, stressed it is urgent that something urgent be done by the government and all concerned to ensure issue of airline safety is accorded the extent of seriousness it deserves. Mr. President, what a country. And when you travel by air, by the time you take off, you are, you are, you are, you, 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 you are, in fact, you say your the first prayer and the last prayer. Both the first and the last all go. Because when you are in the air, <laughs> everything, is <lost>. everything is gone. <laughs> Nothing is left. The matter who you are, you may be the richest man on earth, you may be the poorest person on earth, but by the time you are in the air, you are there. <laughs> you are there. If anything happens, That's the poor, all. the rich, and everybody goes. Ordinary landing equipment that should be in the airports, the commonness of all things, that they can land at any time, whether in the daytime or the nighttime, or during the rain, we don't have them in the airports here. And uh, the words that uh, some of those things that were procured already, we were shown where they were packed. They couldn't even install them in uh, Abuja and in Lagos. And this is the same issue. I suffered as a result of this uh, Dana issue in Paracourt, because I was to attend the Financial Action Task Force meeting in, uh, in uh, Paris. And I went to the airport waiting until 1 a.m. And they came and announced that the, Air, that the Air France that was to go to Paracourt to drop passengers could not drop them and couldn't come back to Lagos. It, rather, he went to Lagos and dropped the passengers. You should ask that Dana must be properly investigated and, if possible, ask AIB to suspend Dana for now, if it's coincidental. Fine, so be it, but let's be sure. But it can't, within two weeks, you have two near misses. I think it's worrisome and it's something we really need to look into seriously. So I'm supporting this motion, but with this few amendments, maybe when we get to the prayers, we'll come up again. Thank you, Mr. President, for allowing me. Former Minister of Aviation, now a Senator, Stella Odua, says the main problem of the Nigerian aviation sector is that of funding. A problem which she says is a huge challenge to the very existence of the airline companies in the aviation industry. Government to give them the requisite fund that they need as a single digit rate. That is the only way aviation airline operators can survive. Otherwise they cannot. Therefore intervention fund is required. For training, aviation needs special funding for personnel training. <coughs> Excuse me. For equipment, detail for that. On his part, Senator Aliu Abdullah advocated declaration of state emergence on aviation sector. So I urge my colleagues that we should be very decisive with respect to this. If necessary, honestly, it is time for us to declare emergency. Uh, I'm a veterinarian by training. If you see two, three rabies dogs, honestly, that is an emergency. <laughs> for, um, for the aviation sector, what has happened? requires that we declare an emergency. 
because they are just lucky. Next time, people may not be lucky. And I don't want to find our situation where we'll come back here again and say, let's give them one minute silence. In fact, let us do the one minute decision now and save life from being destroyed through all of this nonsense that we are seeing. Thank you very much. In his ruling on the motion, Deputy Senate President Ike Kirimadu says concerns raised on the aviation sector are serious enough to warrant urgent attention in addressing them. The Christians will say that there's no repentance in the grave. So I think it's important that this matter is settled as quickly as possible so that they'll be able to be sure that uh, those who fly in Nigeria will fly safely. So myself, I had my own personal experience of last month where an aircraft I was on board um, missed the wrong way twice. Missed the first one, came back and missed the second time. It was just God that saved us. So I'm sure that all of us, or most of us, have had similar experience. So it is important for us to ensure that this matter is sorted out and then that the regulatory agencies do their work, you know, because um, once anything happens, there's nothing you can do to reverse it. The Senate also mandated the Minister of State for Aviation to direct all relevant agencies in the aviation industry to conduct a maintenance and airworthiness audit of all commercial aircraft operating within Nigerian airspace as well as training of personnel operating within the industry. From National Assembly Complex, Abuja, Muywa Bamdele reporting. My name is Oba Detola Olani Olani Pekwimane King. I'm the group MD CEO, Hadron Group of Companies. We wanted to give something to Nigerians, most especially our would-be landlord, a haven of peace and happiness. We are calling on all Nigerians to come and invest in town, park and gardens. Emre, Imotap town, is going to be a place to live in, a place of happiness, a place of comfortability. Town Park and Gardens Imota is a fresh addition to our renowned theme Park and Gardens Estates, Adron Homes, making the incredible. Twenty-four persons, mostly women, children were on Monday killed in a fresh crisis at Omusu Edimoga in Opoku local government area of Benue State. The council chairman, Olofu Ogushe, stated this while conducting state governor Samuel Orton round the affected community on Tuesday. The governor and member of the state security council had visited Omusu Edimoga for an on-the-spot assessment. Ogushi said the airmen are reported to the council the loss of their cow some kilometers from the affected village. Ogushi said while he was already mediating the crisis when report got to him that the airmen had invaded the village and killed some people. The airmen were said to have invaded the community between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. on Monday, allegedly killing some children who were returning from school. Oguche said it was on Monday that the police came to inform him that the s -men reported that the people of Omusu Edimoga village had rusted their cow. Governor Samuel Autumn condemned the attack, accused Fulani of always taking law into their own hand. They reported the case of rustling, but instead of waiting for the outcome of the police investigation, they came and killed 24 people in a day. It is senseless, end of the quotation. According to the governor, the people of Omusu, Edimoga community, does not understand cow language, so no one here rusts to their cow. It is the same Fulani men that are rustling their fellow cow, according to the governor. The governor, however, called on the people not to take law into their hands.
Zamfara State Governor and Chairman Nigerian Governors Forum, Abdulaziz Yari, has called for comprehensive reform of Nigerian police to address the challenges of incessant killing and various security challenges in the country. Yari made the call when he received the Senate Added Committee on Security Infrastructure on a mission to conduct an on the spot assessment of the killing that recently occurred in the state. The governor said the country police is weak and its inability to respond adequately to security challenge in the state. The truth of the matter, my what I realized uh, by stewardship seven years uh, close to now, the challenge of security is lack of recruitment. That's, 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 the, that's the fact. Because the kind of, even this local bandit, not forget about Boko Haram, who are then in trying to have other uh, source of uh, getting equipment international. Even this local that are selling their accounts and get equipment, they are getting more sophisticated with them than some of our police. When we started using the police to control them, we realized that the police cannot. So therefore, we have to make a complaint to the government in the center to deploy more money so that they can get into, into that uh, into the with them. Yari thanked the committee for the visit and the entire East Senate for taking steps to assess the situation in the state, stressing the need for the government at all levels to do everything possible to ensure that peace is maintained in the state. Um, the situation of the security is uh, unfortunate situation, but I believe the government on site, federal government, said, even the local government, uh, putting in their best to ensure that we have a better place to live and uh, control the, the, the issue of adapting, cultural wrestling, and by extension, the abandonment. So all of us, both the federal government, state and local government, we are doing our best to ensure that uh, we are out of where we are. But having said this, as a leaders, it's our responsibility to ensure that the primary objective of the leadership, protective life for parties of the citizens, will be that as number one. And Chairman of the Senate Committee and Majority Leader of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, who said the committee was in the state to review the crisis at hand, stood for cooperation of all parties for peace to reign. Senate leader, who also stressed that the primary duty of every government is the protection of lives and property. He said that security apparatus of the country was not well structured, leaving room for current security lapses that the nation is facing. However, he called on government to empower the security forces. Your Excellency, without taking any more of your time, we need to empower our security agencies at the appropriate time as soon as we agree with the kind of structure that we should have. But it's very important that we continue to emphasize that we in the legislature will continue to give every possible support to our president and the elected general because we need to work together for us to achieve the kind of results that we need to achieve in Nigeria. Nigeria faces not only security challenges but developmental challenges and we have to work together. It is also important to point out that we should continue the kind of cooperation and partnership that we do with the federal government and the president so that the states and the federal government are on the same page and remain so. Senator Lawa, however, conveyed the condolences of the president of the Senate and the entire Senate to the people of Zamfara over the terror attack on the innocent citizen of the state. The committee also met with the traditional rulers, religious leaders, head of security information in the state, including the police, DSS, NSDC, among other, to acquire first hand information. From Abuja, Muiwa Bamdele reporting. Lovely place, right? Yes. What's wrong? You don't look happy. 
Take a look around. Why can't my hotel be like this? I knew something was wrong, but I've got solution. Solution? What? Nanet. Nanet? Nanet offers you design solutions, building plans and construction, furnishing and equipping, financing, management, audit services, and many more services for a better hospitality business. Nanet, service with a smile. My name is Oba Detola Olani Olaunipoikoi Mane King. I'm the Group MD CEO at one group of companies. We wanted to give something to Nigerians, most especially our would be landlord, a haven of peace and happiness. We are calling on all Nigerians to come and invest in town, park, and gardens. Emre, Imotap Town is going to be a place to live in, a place of happiness, a place of comfortability. Town Park and Gardens Imota is a fresh addition to our renowned theme Park and Gardens Estates, Adron Homes, making the incredible. The All Progressive Congress APC in Lagos State has condemned the extension of the tenure of Chief John Oyegun led National Working Committee and other executive of the party. The state caucus of the APC reached the resolution at the end of a meeting on Tuesday at the State House Marina, Lagos, affirming that the extension was against the provision of the constitution of the party. Leader of the party in Lagos Central, who spoke to a reporter at the end of the session, confirmed the resolution of the party. In his quotation, we have considered the issue of extension of the tunnel, and we of the firm belief that the decision is a breach of the constitution of our party and the country. We are against the allegation of tenor. We shall continue to make our decision known to the party and to the president, he said.